What's up, y'all? So it's a big week here at Earn Your Leisure as we have officially launched EYL University. That's right. Our online educational platform is here. And on EYLU, we're going to provide you with courses taught by some of our alumni and experts in the field. We're going to give you live access to our monthly workshops, and we're going to give you weekly webinars. And we're not playing around. We're starting that right now. So this Wednesday, November 6th, the good brother Andre Hatchett is going to teach us all the tools and knowledge of how to make six figures in the mobile notary game. So head to earnyourleisure.com, hit the EYLU tab, and log in. And that's not all. We're going to continue our Hometown Hero series by releasing two episodes this week. That's right, two episodes, Tuesday and Friday. Episode 46 will feature Chicago's own Firemen turn real estate TV celebrities, the Downing Brothers. And episode 47 will feature our hometown, Greenberg, New York's own superstar NFL agent, Greg Barnett. So make sure to tune into both, the one you're going to watch now and Friday at 5. Peace. All right, guys. Welcome back, EYL. Hometown Heroes Edition. Yeah, Shot Town. Yeah, Shot Town. <laughs> Shot Town. Yeah. What's going on? Um, so yeah, so you know, uh, the first Hometown Heroes that we did was in Houston. That's true. Houston. Yeah, yeah. Houston. Shout out to H Town. Shout out to H Town. Shout out to H Town. Shout out to Mike Brown and shout out to Chris Senegal. Those are our first Hometown Heroes. So if you if you know uh, Earn Your Leisure, we, we traveling around all of our major markets and we mm-hmm. we touching the, the, the people. And when we when we touch the town, we, we try to do a couple of interviews with. People that are, are are doing big things in yeah. the community. Shout out to Mike, man. He had a big campaign, and uh, shout out to everybody that supported his uh, Win Win Foundation, man. That was dope. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a fact. So, so, all right, we're in Chicago, and um, we had to tap in with the good brothers, the Downing Brothers. So, South Side, to be exact. South Side, for <laughs> sure. Right. Right. Sure. South, sure. South Side to the world blow up. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, Anthony and Anton, say that correctly, right? That's, That's right. right. Okay, so just left out of H and a Y. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> We're going to jump right into it. As I said, we got Anthony and Anton Downing. Um, first and foremost, thank you guys. Thanks man, we appreciate back. being here, man. Yeah, absolutely. We listen to the podcast. I, I dream one day that, I, that we'd be on here. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Dreams come yeah. true. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> 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 you know. <laughs> nah. Yeah, well, yeah, come true. yeah, so yeah. we're in Chicago. We're in, um, we on the south side. We're in 79th, 79th Street, right? That's right. right. The legendary. Yeah. Right. The legendary 79th yeah, Street. Shout, shout out to Chance the Rapper. He said 79, 79. So, <laughs> yeah, we out here. We out here. So, um, all right. These guys are... Legends in the community, so they're firefighters by trade, yes. and they are celebrities because now they are on HGTV. They have a, their own show on HGTV, mm-hmm. and they're real estate investors. They're very interesting the guys, and so we're going to talk about a lot of different things with them. But before we start, well, the first segment I want to talk about is that a lot of times we talk about entrepreneurship and business, mm-hmm. business. Right. and a lot of times what stops people from being an entrepreneur, being a business owner is that they, you know, it, it's, it's kind of risky to just jump out there and you know you have a nine to five job or a regular job mm. the thing that I, one of the things i like about you guys is that you do both right so you're firefighters and you're right. still firefighters mm-hmm. right right and then you're on tv and you're real estate investors so we haven't covered this is a very interesting job because i'm a financial advisor and i work with some firefighters in new york and mm. firefighters have it good they, they make <laughs> they make they, <laughs> they, they, they make good money um they they have strong unions, especially in New York. Um, Chicago. Oh, we okay. have a very strong union. Chicago Fire. They, they get a pension. <laughs> and they only work like two days a week. I know it is like they work like 24-hour shifts, like two 24-hour shifts. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is now you have like five days where you're not working, which leaves a lot of time where you can do other things, right? So Absolutely. is that how it is in Chicago? Yeah, yeah. that is a great synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is a work to our, to, to our advantage um, to have that time off. Because, I mean, we, yeah, essentially we work eight, eight to nine uh, 24-hour shifts a month. So we had like 22 days off. And the question is, what are you going to do with, that, with that, those 22 days that you are free to do what you want? Mm-hmm. And then eventually uh, real estate enters the picture for us. So, all right. So talk about the fire department because this is something that we, especially in our community, it's not enough black firefighters, right? True. Um, right. So, what a what what got you guys into the fire department and okay. like what are the steps that people can take? Because I think even stuff like that is there he goes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's him up. We're off He's duty though. Wait, wait, we're wait, not going with those guys. Duty. Does anybody have to leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, 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 what like what got you to the fire department? What's some of the steps that somebody can take to, to become a firefighter? Because like I said, it is, it is a good profession. It's an honorable profession as well. Yeah. I mean, so. 
the origin story for, for the fire department part of our story is uh, back in 2006, um, I was fresh, mm-hmm. fresh out of college. Um, I was actually, I was an educator. I started off in education. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was coming, um, driving home, and I still lived at home with my mom. No shame in that. You know what I'm saying? I was out of college, had my first job, and I was saving up money. And um, she said, hey, can you get a gallon of milk on the way home? So I stopped, and I was at a red light, and I saw this big CTA bus with a sign on the side of it saying, answer the call. It's like, mm-hmm. and it had like the website, and it had a firefighter on it, and you know, in education, at least, especially during that period of time, and even right now, um, you know, they do these like big layoffs, and you know, I'm like, man, what, if I get, if I lose my job, because you know, the youngest people on the job are the ones that go first, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and um, I was like, well, I need a plan B or something, and when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Never thought about becoming a, um, a firefighter, but maybe I'll check it out. I look at the website. I go into the parking lot of the Jules grocery store. I walk in, and right on the on the door. The automatic door was the same sign. It was an eight by eleven on the door. I Answer the call. <laughs> right, literally, it's the same thing. Answer the call. So it was, it was kind of like, it was kind of biblical almost. So, <laughs> so I was like, let me get this down in the milk and hurry get home. I got home, I looked it up. <laughs> I looked it up, and I saw, you know, um, I saw the union contract. I saw the pay. Mm. Um, I saw to my, you know, I'm, uh, you know. It would look like an adventure because I'm, you know, I'm physically gifted. So I was just like, you know, it, it'll be, you know, something fun, but also, you know, I can pay the bills. And it, and on top of that, we talked about this. They got a strong union. You know, you never see, you know, firefighters getting laid off or, or whatever. Mm. So, um, and I asked my mom. I said, Mom, let me just sign up all all my brothers. Like, give me the social security number. She's doing you know, not kidding. Know, you know how like, <laughs> he ain't even ask none know, of us. I don't know about y'all, but most moms, you know, <laughs> you know usually has everybody's first so shit. Is and everybody's social so security guy. number. So mom, my mom came out with this little tin thing that had all our information in it, and I signed up all my brothers to take it. <laughs> how, many, how many brothers you got? So it's five. It's, it's five down and brothers. I okay. mean, tw- two. All right, you guys are twins. Yeah, and yeah. we have an older brother, and we have two younger brothers. Yeah, Tony and Andre. They're so not. They're not yeah. twins, though, right? No. no okay. So. Uh, and Al, I was the only one that was too young to take the exam. So I signed everybody up to take the exam. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, my twin brother, in his wisdom, oh, look, did man. not show up to take the exam. <laughs> look, 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 look. Our, our dad was CPD. It was a Chicago police officer. So I was thinking, like, man, that's what we know. I'm going to take police exams. Or I'm not going to take no exam. I was, I was up here waving my degree, like, I'm going to use this degree. <laughs> what, what was the degree in? Uh, history. Okay. History. So you know, and I was a teacher, too? <laughs> it did not work that way. You didn't make it. I ended up working for the Illinois Lottery doing experiential marketing for thirty two thousand dollars with no health insurance. Way to use that degree, man. <laughs> so, uh, needless to say, he should have took my advice and sat down next to me to man, take the exam. But I took listen. the exam and I walked into um, McCormick Place. It was twenty something thousand people there to take this exam. How many people was, were they hiring? Um, they ended up hiring, I, I, I would say, about a, a thousand people. Out of twenty, off, off of that particular list. Wow, you know, and this is back in two thousand six. Um, so, and I had to sit on the list for two years, but I was number five fifty four out of like seventeen thousand plus that actually passed the exam. So, I mean, I, it was a, it was just a blessing. Like, I didn't, I just didn't realize, and I didn't know that I was that I who, like hit who, the lottery. Who sat next to you at the exam? <laughs> Well, I actually, to my right, there was a, a, a empty seat with his with name a, on it. It said oh, anti down okay. right there. It said alphabetical order. So my brother oh, Dre, man. he was sitting next to my left. He was actually there. Oh, y'all, we, y'all all was sitting next yes, to Yes, it's alphabetical order. Except we didn't uh, show I up. all my brother's names on the table. You know what I'm saying? Look, Mom. We made oh, the it. Other, the other, your, your other brother didn't show up either? No, he didn't show up either. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. So two out right. of the four of us decided to actually took the exam. And I actually um, you know, got, the, got the, the score. So two years later, I um, got the letter saying if I was interested right on the day of the Bud Billiken Parade, which is a big deal in Chicago. The Bud Billiken Parade is the second largest parade in the country. And it's actually um, the largest African-American um, parade in the country. So I was actually doing a little side hustle driving in there. And um, when I went out to the mailbox, I saw the letter saying that I got um, that I got the job. Boy, I was sick. Damn. I was sick when he got that letter. I was like, I can't believe I didn't take that test, man. <laughs> and my social security number is like almost exactly the same as his. Right. So I would have been in the same class with him. Right. Mm. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, it's time for me to start taking exams. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And so, I, I mean, but that you you talking about the written exam, right? Yeah, the written exam. But mm-hmm. people kind of overlook the physical exam because I know we have right. a lot of we have some friends in our in our town of Greenberg that have been volunteer firefighters mm-hmm. for years and they just can't pass the physical part. How how right. demanding is that? Right. Um, 
The exam it, it actually has changed in the last ten years because now they've gone to a national uh, uh, called the CPAC, mm -hmm. where everybody takes. But yeah, it was a different thing. That we can took. Candidate um, what CPAC? Uh, candidate physical ability test. Right, and it actually is rigorous. Okay. Like because mm -hmm. I mean you have um, you have to walk. With a weighted vest, like a 70, uh, 50 pound, 70 pound weighted vest mm -hmm. on a, uh, what am I thinking of right now? Track? No, not on a track, on a uh, treadmill. On a treadmill. Right. And that's actually the hardest part because after you get done with that, with that No, 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 vest, it's the Stairmaster. No, I mean, the Stairmaster, right? Yeah. After you get done with that Stairmaster with the weighted vest, you're so tired that even though the rest of the, of the course is relatively simple as far as you being able to raise a ladder and use a, a pike pole and, and crawl through a tunnel crawl through a tunnel all of that stuff is super hard after you've had that weighted vest on and you've yeah. been on that on that uh for three straight minutes for man. three minutes right yeah so but so you i mean every like everything else in life though you go on youtube is there so mm. you can train for what you need to do mm. um when it came to the written exam they mm -hmm. actually give you the source material so you can actually study for that so what's on what's on the written what's on like the written exam is it like science and stuff no, no well, that written depends, exam is not hard man no, well look we talking about chicago yeah. but each <laughs> <laughs> chicago's exam is is literally uh you know uh <laughs> You read it and you answer the multiple choice questions. If you can, if you can read, you got a chance. Right, you can have a chance. You have a chance. Halfway through read. the battle, that's half the battle. That is half the battle. People that can that barely graduate high school can definitely pass that exam if you can read and comprehend. But that's not. But that's not. Um, if you go into the suburbs, no slight to y'all. No slight to y'all. Right. If you go into the suburbs or you go to uh, you know other uh, municipalities, they 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 do have math questions on there. They have yeah. friction loss and things that. I need and I feel to. that like the exams are a lot harder because that's when they ended up doing is taking the Dalton fire exam. And Dalton physically borders Chicago to the south, so you know. <laughs> that exam was way I was like, I was like centrif centrifugal pump. What the hell? <laughs> it, it was nothing like this one on the Chicago exam, at least according to Anthony. But the, but the blessing about it is when the list came out, unlike Anthony being 530, I wasn't 537. <laughs> Then you'll keep hitting my hand. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry I wasn't about 537 it. like this guy right here. And I wasn't 138. Mm. I wasn't 50 either. I was number four. Oh, four out of number out of 10,000. 10, and they were high. No, no. no it was, was it was only pool. like 350 people. Okay. okay. There's like a suburban exam. But then they, they were only hiring six, and I was number four. And I was like, okay, God, you wanted me to answer the call. <laughs> exactly. So, do, do, do you need and a that was only six months later? Do you need a college degree to be a firefighter? No, no. you need a high school diploma or a uh, GED. So, uh, well, how much money can you make? Because in New York, I think you make like a hundred, over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, like a hundred. I think a lot, but the mo a lot of the money comes from overtime, correct? Like how did, yeah, how's that? Yeah, well, well, how much money can you expect to make? In a down, well, for Chicago, your starting salary today, twenty nineteen, um, as a candidate, first day in the academy is um, fifty six thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you start at fifty six thousand. You get a pay bump at twelve months of ten thousand dollars. Oh wow! So now you at sixty six after you made your probation, which is one year. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you get steps every year from that point. Well, yeah, yeah, every year from that point. So basically, right. I've gotten a raise right. every year. Oh and wow! I've been on the department, yeah. you know, for for ten years. So yeah, it, yeah, you hit the lottery. Um, the thing is though, as much as we're talking about money. Right now, yeah, we're, and, we're, and we're talking schedule, about the downside. The, 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 you actually do risk your life. Oh yeah, you mm. could die. To yeah. Do. Yeah. So <laughs> at, at there my, is at, no guarantee of coming <laughs> home. There's no guarantee of coming home. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, my firehouse is literally just right down the block. It's ten blocks down, right here on 79th Street. And yeah. um, two men that I have worked with um, died in the line of duty, and I've carried their cast. God bless. Oh, God bless. Yeah, rest, rest in peace. peace. God so bless. I, I do want to say that you know it's a great job. Mm -hmm. um, great money. We enjoy yeah. ourselves. We laugh, have fun. Yeah, <laughs> great food at the firehouse. All this and that. I had a similar experience because one yeah. uh, one of my actual classmates passed June tenth of twenty seventeen. Mm -hmm. Line of duty. So the, it, it, it's jarring sometimes and sobering as 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 dope as the salary is or the people that pat you on the back when you at the grocery store and all that type of stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, we have to deal with that reality every time we go to work. Yeah, we sure. might not come home. Yeah, you said in Chicago, uh, y'all are like first responders, right? To any type of any type of anything scene? that right. happens, we're the first ones there. Somebody gets shot, a fire truck or a fire engine is pulling up. You know, yeah. if it's a car accident, we're pulling up. Um, heart, heart attack, asthma attack, 
anything that happens in the city because yeah. we're medically trained, we're the first ones for everything. If it's a hazmat incident, somebody spills oil all over the expressway, we're yeah. there. Yeah. So I mean, um, they call us the fire department, but we're really an all hazards department. Okay. All hazards. Yeah. So we do everything. So all right. So okay. So you guys are real estate investors, right? So. Mm -hmm. right. What, as I said, what the thing with the firefighter is that you, you work only two days. You only work two days a week. Um, so it leaves a couple, like five days where you're not working, mm -hmm. um, which leaves a lot of time to be creative and do different things, right? right? So what made you, was that one of the things that encouraged you to become real estate investors, being that you had free time on your hands? Or like, what got you into that? Man, nah, it was a challenge for my mom. <laughs> oh, wow. My, yeah. I remember I got my first paycheck and I came home, came home happy. And I think about this, this mm -hmm. that first paycheck, it was eight hundred and fifty four dollars. I thought I was a baller because, <laughs> like, you know, a month ago I was a down, broke college. Student. I was at the University of Illinois getting one hundred and fifty dollars every two weeks for my little student student job. So I got this first paycheck, and I think my mother felt that energy and was like, "Nah, nah, 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 you need to pull that back." And she and she sat there. She said, "Sit at the table." Don't move from that spot. I'm like, am I in <laughs> trouble? Like, I'm right. like, yeah, or something. He got his first paycheck. He, right. I it's supposed it was, to be a momentous occasion. Right. It's supposed to be a celebration. She's like, <laughs> she's like, well, um, do you have a 401k? I was like, well, we can't start a 401k until... Because I, actually, I was at I was working at Job Corps. I was a career counselor at Job Corps. Okay. I, that was the first job. Shout out to, to Job Corps. Job Corps. Yeah. I, was there for, I was there for 10 months before I started with the Chicago Public Schools. But, I, you know, you have to be there for 12 months to, get, to start a 401k. And she was like, well, I want you to start... Um, you know, in, in investment. Mm. So she was like, you know, I want you to start with um, MetLife. I want you to take $100 a paycheck and put it into this retirement account. And I'm like, $100? I only made 854 And she was like, no, $100 has created this. And she pulled she pulled out all of the, she was really transparent. First time in my life, I'm, you know, I'm 22. Mm -hmm. She put all of her papers for each one of her retirement accounts out. Mm. One of them had one hundred and fifty thousand, one hundred sixty thousand in it. Another one had like fifty grand in it. Another one had like twenty five grand. My mom wasn't playing. So she had four. <laughs> she had four different accounts, and she showed me the statements and the balances. And she said, a hundred dollars a month from every job I've had since I moved to the United States has gone into the, and no matter what job, yeah. when I transfer the job, I continue paying hundred dollars into that one, and now I had hundred dollars into this one, and this one, and this one. So like you know, four hundred dollars a check over the course mm -hmm. of your entire life since you've been here has gotten me to this point. So what I'm asking you to do is only what I've already done. I was like, okay, mom, I'll do it. She <laughs> gave me the number. I called mm -hmm. and set up my first, you know, um, retirement account. But then in that same conversation, she said, um, "Here, here it come. You're not a real man. Ooh, until you <laughs> own the floors you walk on." Damn. I said. Thanks, mom. I'm like, I know. <laughs> you don't even know what to say to that. I'm like, I'm not a real man. He don't got one either. You know, I, 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 bro, I'm telling you, I felt some type of way, bro. And, and then from that point on, I it's said, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. So I start. not only did I start that retirement account, I started putting money away because, you know, I'm living at home and she only asked me to pay for, for like the uh, utility bill, you know, whatever, the electric bill. And the rest of it, I was able to just put away. I put that money away and over the course of 18 months... Um, I saved up six thousand dollars, and I had um, I got my credit score to like six sixty, six eighty, something like that before I left and got my first apartment. You know, just because I needed my own privacy, my own space, whatever. But because of that conversation, it put mm -hmm. us put me on track to have the ability to mm -hmm. uh, to buy my first crib, which I did at the age of twenty five. That's powerful. So I mean, y'all are born and raised in Chicago. Yeah, but, yeah. but mom's yeah. from the Bahamas, right? Yeah, yeah Nassau, Bahamas. So I mean, mom sounds like she's she's been on point, right? Yeah, what's, she, your mom, she, what's your mom? Like, like she, when you have an immigrant parent, man, you realize that they, they're gonna tell you stories. Like, uh, we had to walk all the way to school. <laughs> tell me about it. And, and walk back. <laughs> we had to help with my, what, what you know, Aunt Grace's store. You know, we didn't get to go do whatever. Yeah, the beach was right there, and we saw the beach. We didn't go to the beach until Saturday. You know, like yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. You know, <laughs> but y had, y had, did, did y'all have land out there as well? Yeah, yeah but we, we still we do. do. We have still land. do. Okay, yeah, we're yeah. building new construction on it right now. Well, shout out to the Bahamas too. We know that they, um, you know, they're recovering from the, from the hurricane. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And Our um, last event that we had, we were able to put together a pallet and together with other Bahamians from the uh, Ch Chicago land area. Yeah, the Bahamas Association of Chicago, we were able to put 8,800 pounds worth of 
water, non-perishable food, and clothes and send it to Grand Bahama. Yeah, so if yeah. you are listening, please, they still need your help. For yeah, sure. They still need your help. For mm-hmm. sure. God bless. God bless. So, all right. So now in the second segment, we're going to go into your your, your star level uh, show. <laughs> HGTV. We're going to talk about that and, and, yeah. and how that came about, for sure. Yeah. All right, so so now we're gonna go into um, you know your your local celebrity status and um, <laughs> shout out to my guy yeah. Jamal Jeffries. He's from Chicago and um, he's a friend of ours. So when we got before we got in, I'm like, yo, you know these guys are Downing Brothers. He's like, oh yeah, the guys they they from the South Side. They the guys from the South Side. <laughs> how, how was that Chicago impression? That was good. The guy- <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, can I tell you, yo, when we at, when we at the event and everybody's like, yo, man, I like them gym shoes you got on. I'm like, what? <laughs> They like them gym shoes. Yeah. I'm like, these all the kicks. They like the gym shoes, man. I'm like, right. oh, all right, I got we you. Got we you. definitely call them the gym, gym shoes in Chicago. <laughs> the guys, yeah, the, the guys. Everybody like, yo, the guys, yeah, me and the guys, da da da. So yeah, shout out to Shot Town. But um, yeah. but yeah. So all right. So you're firefighters, right? And then you start uh-huh. your real estate investor career. Right. But then, you, how did you get picked up to do a TV show? Like, how does that work out? Man, let me tell you, <laughs> it, it didn't happen on purpose. We were. Uh, helping our cousin rehab this uh, six-unit apartment building when we got a call from Troy uh, Pryor, who he, who runs the Creative Cipher here in Chicago. And we went to college with him, and he said, yeah, I got this director that wants to do this torture scene, um, and we need, like, like, a basement or something like that. Are y'all working on any properties where y'all haven't f- finished the basement yet? He was like, yeah, man, come on over to this building that we're working on right now. Right. You know, uh, over here in, uh, in South Shore. Of, yeah, in South Shore. And so when he comes and they they look at both of the basements because you know it's a six unit building so they kind of have like separated basements, and as he's getting ready to leave, he turns to us and he's like, "Man, have y'all ever thought about doing a show on HGTV?" No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this is a side hustle, bro. <laughs> like, not at all. But he was being dead serious. He was serious, and then he pulled. He literally pulled out his phone and said, "No, nah, man, I want you to talk." Um, to Craig Harris, man, that's one of my frat brothers, and you know he's really serious in this in this TV industry. He has yeah. a, he has a show out now, and this and the other, uh-huh. and he actually put us on speakerphone. Like he didn't give us a choice. Mm. He put us on speakerphone, and now we just like, oh hey, how you doing? No time like now. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we started talking to Craig. He asked us all these questions about what we do, where we're from, so on and so forth. You know what properties we're working on, mm-hmm. um, and I guess to get get to know our background and our personality. And then after that, he was like, hey, well, you know what? I need yeah. you to send me some pictures and a bio. We did it that same night. <laughs> yeah, then it got it got real because serious. Since, because they were being so serious, we were being serious. Now we too. had to be serious. Yeah, yeah. It's a you fact. know, got to see no, the moment, man. The reason, uh, so EYL is the educational platform, and we kind of like dig deep. And I think this is a good um, segment to talk about as far as like people that might be in this situation, right? What does it look like? Like, what is an offer? Do they come with a first offer? Do you counter offer? Do they just say, okay, this is like the flat rate we we give people like. How does that look? How do you know you're getting a good deal? Like you have a lawyer? Like yeah, what, how does so, that work out? So yeah. well, we had to go get a, um, a lawyer right away. Yeah, we got an entertainment lawyer, yeah. and then he explained to us what the industry standard is. That's like a keyword industry standard mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. what you get paid for someone who who's in your exact position. Someone who's for us no TV experience, never done any of this mm-hmm. stuff before, and and he actually was able to tell us exactly how much people people get paid. Right, and um, but. It was a unique situation for us because we weren't just getting paid for um, as for being talented for being in front talented. of the camera. We were also getting, getting paid, paid for on the actual, actual real estate. Oh, true, true. Right, and, yeah. all, and then all the resources that they give you when you're actually. Oh, like, explain that. Explain that. So you, you're, they're, they're giving you deals. No, no, we had we had to find the property ourselves. Okay. okay. And plus, yeah. plus, they, we didn't have a hundred percent of like everything that the HGTV you know gives. Um, their talent because it was a no, pilot. Yeah, because you don't get all of that stuff until you go to series. Right. Then they give you a much bigger budget. So right. like the Property Brothers, their budget is out the wall. Oh yeah, yeah that's as big as it gets. Yo, so yes. like, but, but, yeah. all right, but what do you mean a budget? Like, how, what, what well, you, they have a budget for how much they will help to to pay for the contractors. They give you a for budget the, of for materials. materials. Um, that they can contribute to uh, if, through their sponsors and things of that nature. So, yeah. the, so mm-hmm. like, let's say that they, all right, so they give a salary, let's say, of $100,000, mm-hmm. and they give a budget of $200,000. Right. A $200,000 budget, you find the properties, mm-hmm. they give you a budget of $200,000, mm-hmm. and you use that $200,000 to actually fix, fix up the home. Right. Now, you got to secure right. the property yourself, though. 
mm. that's still on you. You have to secure the properties. One of, one of the things right. I like about what y'all were doing, it was like opposed to that other um, show, was like they were, every time I watch it, it's like they find a property, it's 700000 it's going to be 150 to renovate, it's 850 no. And when y'all looked at it, y'all like, yo, listen, man. No, we, in our we, community, wanted, we don't do that. <laughs> like, one, we wanted to do properties in our own neighborhood. Right. And we wanted to be authentic, too. Yeah. So right you would, I, I, and I read that I was just like, look, man, y'all, y'all were looking for properties, obviously in your neighborhoods, yeah. right? And it was like the properties are going for like two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand. That's more relative. Like we can reach that. Having a property that's a right. million dollars is not attainable for us at this moment. Was, more right. people can do the two hundred thousand, the, the one hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, I think I think you know I'm listening to like um, you know they have callers like we've been on radio shows where callers call in mm-hmm. and I think or we've had people you know who jump on and make comments on our social media and I think the thing that they appreciate it the most is like man just being everyday people mm-hmm. being sincere being honest about what we're doing um, where we're doing it and why you know and then not just being transactional but being transformative mm-hmm. right. like we got to be like we have to actually care about our neighborhoods and not just try to get over. You know, yeah. and then on on top of that, you know, if anybody listens to you know listens to our podcast or 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 sees us at a seminar, we actually tell the actual, actual numbers. numbers. This yeah. is how much the property costs. Yeah. This is how much we had to bring the clothes in cash. This was the interest rate. Mm-hmm. You know, all of those different things because we want people to learn from our experiences. So it's not just oh, it's not just entertainment, but we want to educate. So a TV deal. Um, okay. Is it like one year or is it like per season? How do they how do they and how do they gauge like, okay, this is we're gonna renew this for a second season? Like how does that work? The TV deals are much like the NBA or no, it's like the NFL. More and more like the NFL. <laughs> Nothing guaranteed. Right. <laughs> the the pilot was the only part that was guaranteed, even though we signed a contract for the full season. Mm-hmm. But they let us know but they have the option. Yeah. How many episodes is a season? Generally, either 10. ten or twelve. Okay. Yeah. So, but you got paid for the whole season, even if they didn't. Release? No, we only got paid for the for uh, the pilot episode. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And a pilot was one episode. One episode. Yeah. So right. after after the pilot, depending on the ratings of the pilot, they exactly. will say we're going to pick this up for a season. Right. Okay. The ratings and the politics. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because forget. it's more politics because our ratings were now something else Amazing. y'all y'all do that <laughs> yeah. that is a very intentional right. Y'all hire people that look like us right, and not just us, but mm-hmm. a lot. I saw like women. Specifically, women that look like yeah, us. Yeah, you noticed right? that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to talk <laughs> yeah. about that a little bit? Yeah, man. I mean, all of that was intentional because we knew we only had one shot. Like, you you really feel that way. Yeah. So, we've been watching HDTV since, you know, forever. Mm-hmm. You know, since we were in college and things like that. We wanted everyone to see that we really actually work with people that look like us. That the neighborhood was our neighborhood, things like that. Like, you know, you know, it was super important. Right. And we even as people were riding past, whenever they saw all of those t- TV cameras in front of our, uh, um, in front of the house we were working on, they would stop and say, "Hey, what's going on, guys? What y'all doing here?" Da 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 da. We spoke to them. Mm-hmm. We weren't trying to act all high and mighty or nothing like that. We we let them know what's going we on. Let them know what's going on. Why we doing it? So on and so forth. So I mean, it's like. So we can have that that positive social impact, yeah. Um, and people feel included, and and they understand like, yo, what we're doing is actually going to make the neighborhood better. And on top of that, we like we're not pushing, you know, taking a two hundred thousand dollar house and making it into a five hundred thousand one, and now nobody can afford to live in the neighborhood like overnight. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, you know. So I don't know. We it's just common sense uh, type type of things. You know, even with, with the. Um, the alderman, the city council member, you know, we got got her involved and let her know what was going on and mm. be inclusive of of everybody. So I mean, mm. that's why our journey is 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 kind of different. So even all right, so we talk about the publicist, right? Mm-hmm. Um, was that part of HGTV packaging or was that your own brand? No, we packaging? got our own publicist. So what, what what made you what made you decide you wanted to get a publicist? Well, one, we wanted to take control of our own narrative. And take control of yeah, um, the direction absolutely. and opportunities, right? Because you know, when you get an opportunity like this, and you're on national TV, not just local TV, but national TV, mm-hmm. you know, you have to start thinking about like, you know, um, how much exposure you can get, um, how many opportunities you can, uh, you know, basically create out of that, like partnerships, endorsements, um, business deals. Because the other thing too is you got what's, what happens on TV and you got what's happening in real life. And you know, we want to continue to grow and create more yeah. actual transactions um, for 
you know, our real estate business because we want to flip as many houses, we want to scale. Scale is a big word. Mm -hmm. Like scaling means you go from doing just one house at a time to doing two or three houses to going mm -hmm. to commercial properties. And you know, now once we were made aware, because awareness is like the biggest thing. That's why this podcast is so awesome because it's like it may raise our awareness of All what's of available to us, so we can Thank start you. pursuing those. Thank you. Those real. Yeah, for real. Yeah, appreciate it. For, yeah. You know, I mean, I think about assets over liabilities. Like, we, we were like, what assets can we create and what partnerships can we create? And that's mm -hmm. why the publicist getting us all that exposure opened all of these doors that we currently have. And so, our publicists understood that we wanted to be on black platforms just as much as we were going to be on ABC or WGN. Mm -hmm. Those things, of course, you want to be on those too. But we, need, we wanted to be on WGCI. You know, a black radio station. We wanted to be on WVON to, to reach uh, parts of our community. Mm -hmm. Like WVON kind of caters to like the like uh, middle aged, you know, African Americans and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we wanted our publicist was able to get us into those spaces as well as like the big stations. Yeah, and it's crazy because like what y'all doing, and, and my man Mike, shout out to Mike. Like, he always has a word that he sticks with. So narrative is, what's, is like, usually his word. Mm. He's like, yo, y'all are changing the narrative. Because when we think, especially from New York, when we hear the South Side of Chicago, we think violence. But y'all are changing the narrative. Are y'all seeing the impact that people are trying to continue, like, down your path as well? Mm. Speaking to that, the neighborhood we picked, yeah. Peel Hill, was one, is one of the best black neighborhoods in Chicago. So, like, when people got to see that, they got, again, you're right. For the first time, got to see, wow, they didn't go to Inglewood was where the people are shooting this stuff. I thought black folks lived in bad neighborhoods. Nah. We have good neighborhoods. We have good neighborhoods, too. <laughs> it's important to know. Yeah. And then um, seminars, right? We are in position now. Um, shout out to, to Jerry Greer and Guarantee Rate, making mm -hmm. it available for us to have seminars to educate people about home ownership and how to get um, financing yeah. and, and how to buy properties and do everything that they see us doing. And that, that's the thing, making it available to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with, with corporate sponsorship, we are able to get so many more people an opportunity to get in on real estate the way we're getting in on real estate. And it, it's a big need for it. People are super excited. I mean, just think mm -hmm. about, I mean, just last night we were, we were at, at the networking social, how many people came out because they're really serious about starting a business or owning property. Like there's yeah. a big niche there that needs to be filled. There's, yeah. a, there's a problem that needs to be answered. How did you get, how'd you get the corporate sponsorship? That, that actually kind of fell by accident because uh, <laughs> so, so 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 Jared right happens to be having a business meeting. Yeah, and, now you know how you say you're Jamaican, right? Yes, sir. We yeah, at a Jamaican yeah, restaurant. We were at Ja Grill <laughs> in Hyde Park on the south ja side of Chicago. Grill. Yeah, shout out to all the rosters. This is the and, <laughs> all of that, and it was just like the second time our show was coming on TV, and we didn't want to be at home, and this wasn't. You know, any of that type of stuff. We wanted to sit and eat, you know, some West Indian food. We, we're Bahamian. We wanted to eat some West Indian food and watch ourselves on TV. And then Jerry <laughs> yeah. Greer and, and one of his um, co workers or colleagues, they were there for, for some type of lunch, um, like business lunch, whatever. And he walks up to the bar because we were eating at the bar. And he looks up at the screen and he looks at us like, is that y'all? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Exactly. And the, the crazy thing about it is it's not like we did business immediately. Like we exchanged information yeah. and it was like five, four, five, six months or something like that before we actually reconnected. And then we, you know, kind of exchanged ideas. This is what we want to do. We want to start having these live seminars to educate yeah. people about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that it would benefit, you know, uh, his business and guarantee rate and so on and so forth. And it's just, it naturally... Um, it was a natural fit. That's dope. Yeah. So yeah. when you when you um, all right. So as far as this is an interesting conversation because we're in a day and age now where TV is kind of dying. We talked about this off camera, right? Yeah. And it's streaming, but even like YouTube, right? So it's like for you, you're on, um, you're still on, you're you're on TV, right? But you have a podcast and you do stuff outside of that as well. Mm -hmm. So for somebody that may want to follow your footsteps, right? Right. Is it more beneficial to be on a network or is it more beneficial to start your own thing through independent on YouTube or the streaming? Like, what's, what's the differences and what's your, what's your personal take on it? Because you actually have a TV show on a network. so Right. So I think, um, really, you got to start somewhere. I mean, starting your own, like a lot of people are becoming famous yeah. now. You think about like Lil Nas X, he was on TikTok. Yeah. And blew up because he started his own content. You got to create yeah. your own content and create your own exposure and create your own opportunities. We, 
our story was different because we weren't trying to do this and we kind of fell backwards into it and, and, and everything that and even now we're continuing to just like be ourselves and then opportunities come to us and that's the other thing too be true to yourself don't try to be anybody else and mm-hmm. create your content and be good and be of service to people yeah help that's the biggest part with Being whatever you're doing people. don't tear people down be of service and try to help be helpful and, and bring joy into this world so i, I think Create your own content and then start networking. Go to the conferences. Mm-hmm. Start meeting people who work in the industry, um, uh, publicists, um, people who work in NPR. There are people who are already doing the things and are already working in the spaces. And you just got to figure out how you can develop relationships because relationships are everything. Everything that's yeah. happening in our lives. Because if you have a conversation with us a year from now, we, we, I, I don't think we're really prepared to talk about what we're doing right now. But a year from now, you're going to see it. And it's all because of the relationships that we have. Yeah. That, that now yeah. are creating an opportunity for us to move from residential to, com- to commercial. I, I, things I, like I think the big thing is is that oftentimes when you look at at, at hip hop or if you look black, at black folks and other at, aspects of entertainment, we're big upping ourselves constantly. Look at this crystal. Look look at this mansion I'm living in, or all of that type of stuff. But until your conversation is about how you're gonna tell other people how they can get what you got. You know, it, it's, it stalls. Like, our biggest thing that we're doing right now is telling people how to get the multi unit buildings that we have that translated into flipping and the cash tra- flow and cash flow and all of those type of things and showing people the numbers and saying, you can do this as well. This is not about us trying to floss on y'all. <laughs> right, right. You right. know, I mean, I'm looking at how you got shot to the, t- to the top. My observation of what's happening with Earn Your Leisure is yeah. that you are providing a service and education to people and people become supporters of you and they reshare, repost and share everything that you got going on. Because, Big facts. You, because you're helping people. <laughs> what, it's, like, yeah. it's, the, it's like, what is it? it what's in it for me? And if you can answer what's in it for me, for the person who's sitting across from you or, or who's on the other side of the TV screen or, or phone, mm-hmm. that's how you get where you want to be as far as if you're trying to land a TV show, be on radio or whatever your dream is. Hashtag big facts. This is a public service um, announcement. Yeah, you guys are good because that's a perfect segment to our next topic, our new topic, which you're going to talk about yeah. what you guys are doing and we're going to break down some numbers, hopefully. So yeah, we're yeah, going to talk about it. that for sure. All right, so now we're going to go into what you guys actually are on TV for um, as far as, you know, fixing up homes and flipping homes in Chicago specifically, in Southside Chicago, right? That's the area you focus yeah, on? Southside. All right, so, um, okay. So what's the real estate opportunities? Because in Chicago, we're in Chicago, so I think it's important to talk about, highlight mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah, before we start anything, what's, how is the, what's Chicago real estate look like and what's the real estate opportunities in Chicago? There are a lot of opportunities in Chicago. Man, we have one of the hottest uh, markets in the country. Right. The question is, you know, it's just how are you starting? I mean, if if you do have your um your your credit and your and your and your money saved up, you know what I'm saying? As a first time home buyer, this there's an enormous amount of opportunities and we advise people that are starting off to go for cash flow. Go, mm-hmm. go get that 3 or 4 unit uh, property or go get a 203k renovation loan or some kind of Fannie Mae uh, uh, construction loan so that you can get a properties below market value because there's thousands mm. of pro- I'm not talking about hundreds of properties there's thousands of properties in the Chicago land area mm-hmm. yes that you can get below market value and renovate and then turn that into a cash flowing uh, property or um, a property that you live in for a couple of years and you know people talking about house hacking now mm-hmm. you know living for a couple of years and then you know sell it after two years and now you got this check and now you got capital to start a business or get another property or do multiple things so when you say below market value like what are we talking about as far as numbers like some okay. what's, what's an example of like a home that you just recently flipped or something that you could okay. like expect like okay this is something that is typical man tell them about the one um okay. the Bronzeville house you want to talk about Brownsville? Yeah, no, you said the last property. Was just- oh, yeah. oh, no, it doesn't no, have to be the last one. It could be, it could be what anyone. Okay, well, yeah. all right. So, yeah. I, I, well, I do use this example um, a lot. So, yeah. um, so I got a three thousand square foot graystone um, single family home. What's in- what, graystone? Graystone. What is that? It's like a brownstone. Okay, you guys a call brownstone. Them okay, okay. Because okay, okay. okay. they, 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 they great. All right. All right. <laughs> That's it. Right. So, so I got a three thousand square foot graystone in Bronzeville, which is a neighborhood on the south side. Um, got that for two hundred thousand. Um, got it below market value because um, the recession was going on, and um, the guy was trying to sell it because he was in pre foreclosure. So got it for two hundred thousand, 
and I'd use a 203k renovation loan for that property. So mm -hmm. that allowed me to have the money to purchase the property for 200,000 and I also rolled in 30,000 in renovation. Now this property didn't require a gut rehab. I mean 30,000 I I did a couple of the bathrooms, um redid the porch and and the kitchen. And that's what I initially did. Made all of those things look brand new. Didn't touch any of the drywall throughout the house. None of that oh, type of stuff. This, right. not, this is not a fixer upper. So this, nah. yeah. yeah. So th this was just updating kitchen. Updating. A great Bathrooms. opportunity. And yeah. you only put yeah. three thousand three percent down. Three percent. Three and a half percent. Okay. So I came to that closing um, with seventy seven hundred dollars. So seven thousand seven hundred dollars. And the reason why is because it, I, I couldn't negotiate because it was the bank and it was a foreclosure. I want to uh, not. I want to. I want that to go with people's heads because we talked about two or three k loan actually um, with Jay Morrison, but right. he, we didn't go through a real world example. So this is good. Mm -hmm. So you got a two hundred thousand dollar property, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you had thirty thousand for renovation costs. Right. right. So it's two hundred and thirty thousand. Was the full loan? The two hundred three k loan allows you to put three to three point five percent down. Right. But the the thirty k gets wrapped into the mortgage. Right. So. Right. 3% of 230 is like 7,000. No, seven, yeah, seven, seven five, something like that. So mm -hmm. you got the renovation and the home for, not including closing costs, but $7,000 is how much the down payment was. Right. right. Then with closing costs, how much was it with closing costs? I mean, I came to closing to total all in for 7,700. How? Um, Did you roll that into the mortgage? Yeah, because it was all rolled in. Okay, right. you rolled it into so, the mortgage. So, yeah. all right. That's good to know. I actually, uh, uh, actually rolled in... Um, three of the first month's um, payments into the, into the loan also. So I didn't have to make my first payment until I was actually moving into the property, which was 90 days later. That's because you were, there was gonna, you were updating the bathrooms. Right, or, because okay. all the updates and the renovations. Okay. okay, I'm sorry, I cut you off. So all right, right. so now speed it up. So all right, you got the property for 7,700. Right. Now you have it, now what? Now, now I have mm -hmm. it, renovation needed to start just about immediately. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, in that process, I had already um, got uh, three different contractors to give scope of work mm -hmm. um, so that I can decide which one I wanted to work with as far as um, you know, just completing the work and how much the, the materials would cost and, uh, and, and things like that. And, and you make the contractors very honest when they know that they're, they're right. one of three and they're yeah. competing. What's, what was that process like dealing with contractors? Because a lot of times people go into these deals and they say that's the toughest part is right. dealing well, with contractors. Mm -hmm. I, we we always push doing these um, these two or three k renovation loans um, because when you do a renovation loan, there is an inspector who comes behind the contractors on each draw or phase mm -hmm. of the of the project. Mm -hmm. The money comes uh, each draw. Let's say thirty thousand, you get ten thousand three times. Mm -hmm. The money comes to the homeowner that ten thousand dollars to pay the contractor. The contractor for the first draw has to do that ten thousand dollars worth of work out of his own pocket. Okay. The contractor has to put his own money up. Okay. And has an inspector who comes to make sure that he's done the work up to code before the money is released to to the homeowner to give to them for the next phase. So they don't right. make their profit until they finish all of the work because they had to go to do the first phase out of pocket. So now the homeowner is protected. So now there's no contractor getting over on you or trying like, to convince you that the the work is good enough. Yeah. Did, uh, quick question now, because I'm thinking like you guys are firefighters, and obviously you guys must know cold, right? Did that? Did your experience as being firefighters help you during that process? Yes, because I mean, mm -hmm. well, as firefighters too, I mean, we learn we learn about building um, construction, and we see a whole lot because we, in the process of being a firefighter, you, you see houses that are like burned yeah. down and destroyed, so you see everything, and, and we tear out a lot of walls and ceilings mm -hmm. and things like that. So we're right. kind of on the other side of it. Yeah, and then we yeah. also work with a, a lot of firefighters that happen to be in the trades. So mm -hmm. we, you know, you learn a lot th through that process also. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the thing is, it removed all the fear because you actually had this this inspector who comes and, and makes sure that the work is done completely. Right. So okay. all right, so okay, so now you 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 started the. Um, they're bringing the contractors in. Mm -hmm. What's the next steps after that? Like, how long did it take to fully renovate it? When were you able to get tenants in? Like, what's the deal? Well, well, this was a single family home, so I wasn't, I didn't have to deal with tenants. But okay. I had 90 days to get the to get the work done, and actually, it got done in a shorter period than that. I think we were done in like you know uh, 65, 70 days or whatever. So by the time mm -hmm. I had to make my first payment, mortgage payment, I was able to move in, move my furniture in, and then and start. So living. You, you was living there. Yeah, I lived there. Okay. Yeah. How long did you live there? Um, I was there for three, a little about three and a half years. My intention was to be there for two years because I knew. That um, you know, after two years, I would be able to sell the property, no capital gains, uh, and also I knew that my credit would go back up because I did short. I did a short sale. See, we mm -hmm. didn't include that. 
the condo that I had, I did a short sale on that. After two years, my credit went back up and it coincided mm -hmm. with my ability to sell this property uh, with no capital gains. Mm -hmm. Now, I was enjoying myself so much that I actually ended up <laughs> staying for a little bit longer than I Man, anticipated. We had so many poetry sets, and <laughs> toga parties, and so you guys were both shrimp living in boils. <laughs> you so, guys were both living in the property? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. no, no. no. So, can you talk about that capital gains? You said that two years you uh, allowed you not to pay capital gains. Right. So, you, you had to be there that? 24 months. That's the rule. What is capital gains? A capital, capital gains is the profit that you make on a property, the difference between how much you pay for it and how much you actually sold the property for. So the profit mm -hmm. is the capital gain. And so the tax on the capital gain happens on properties that are not your primary residence or you haven't lived in as your primary residence for at least 24 months. So mm -hmm. that's why I knew I needed to be there for at least 24 months in order to be able to uh, collect those capital gains, which in this instance was $80,000 cash, and then be able to then have the capital to move on to buy a multi-unit property and then start flipping homes and then partnering with my brother um, right. to really you know, start to do more than we had ever anticipated. It so was if, time. if you don't live in a property for more than a year and you sell it, but you, you use their proceeds to buy another home, do you still have to pay capital gains? You, know, you can do um, what they call a, a 1035? Yeah, yeah, 1030 exchange. The exchange. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. He knew. Yeah. You already knew what you wanted well, to do. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's different ways to slice it. Yeah, you yeah. Can do that. yeah. I answered my own question. <laughs> All right. So, okay. That, and the so, whole time that he was doing that, mind you, I, I'm, I'm also buying my two unit buildings while he's doing that. Right. So, by the time he sold that property three and a half years later, I already had two three unit buildings that mm -hmm. are cash flowing. And so, it's like mm -hmm. the two of us are like one like one person, right? Because I'm implying <laughs> one strategy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, tw but, but twins. 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 And when his condo went from worth of 150 to being upside down to 30000 I looked at that. I was like, I ain't never buying a condo. In fact, I ain't buying a house neither. You know, I'm going Thanks. straight for the multi-unit yeah. uh, apartment buildings. Thanks for making that mistake, bro. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Thanks. You know, somebody, Thanks. somebody has to jump out there first. And yeah, 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 yeah. Bust open. But right. the thing is, what we did learn, though, is we learned mm -hmm. about the power of cash flow. Mm -hmm. And we learned about the power of buying properties below market value and, the, and, and being able to get that cash and that leverage. For right. us to then be able to go now, now I got this lump sum of money, mm -hmm. and now it's like okay, now let me let's buy another multi-unit property, so we for for cash flow. Now let's go, um, you know, we went hard money, you know, did a flip that way, mm -hmm. and yeah. then, and then you know from there now the wheels are turning. Now you got the next deal and the next deal, more confidence, right. more confidence. Right. Things, you know, things go wrong, and and those when you get burned, when you touch that stove, you don't ever touch it again. Mm -hmm. So like you know different things that we learned about how we deal with contracts and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. everything didn't just, you know, shoot perfectly, but it still was, you know, enabled us to make it to the point where we ended up on TV. How did you, uh, how much did you sell that property for? Um, I ended up selling that property for three fifteen, three sixteen, for, uh, three fifteen. And, and well, oh, well, you want to give the exact three thousand, three hundred and sixteen thousand and five hundred or whatever it was, but yeah. So in two years, you held it for two years? <laughs> uh, three. It's not bad. So it's so, so a hundred and sixteen thousand dollar profit that you made. Right. For three years, and you got it for seventy seven hundred dollars. How much was your monthly mortgage? Um, my monthly mortgage was like uh, I think it was like fourteen hundred. That's powerful. That's yeah, actually yeah. really powerful yeah. because, especially in New York, we are paying rent for nineteen hundred, twenty one hundred, twenty two hundred dollars a month. Where? Rent. Where? Where's that at? And it's like <laughs> right. <laughs> what? Twenty twenty one. It's that. It's way one bedroom. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. not three thousand square feet. No, no, no way. <laughs> Maybe so you're saying eight, it no, wasn't no, no. three bedrooms and four bathrooms. No, no. Maybe no. nine hundred square feet. No, man, eight, eight, seven, seven hundred square feet. One man, bedroom, one that, bathroom. That's rough, man. Welcome and you got to pay for parking. Yeah. Um, so you got a you got a, a, a property for seven thousand dollars, paying right. under two thousand dollars a month, and mm -hmm. you held it for a couple years and made a hundred and some odd thousand dollar profit. I say that to say a lot of times people don't fully understand how attainable buying a home really is. Mm -hmm. yeah. you can, it's different programs it and there's different ways. You have to educate yourself. That's one of the reasons of the podcast. But it's not, it's not as far-fetched as it may seem. Yeah. No, it's not. I think, I, mean, people, I think people live in fear, right? Because they've never seen it. Like, we, like I said earlier, it, like, mm -hmm. we're first generation. So like, we don't know what we don't know. Like, people right. don't know that you, these, these, these uh, opportunities are out there. 
I had a question for you guys because I was driving in on, on um, in the Uber and I was looking around and the cab driver, I'm like, oh, it's the South Side. He's like, yeah, same thing it looked like 20 years ago. And I was like, all right, well, I see a lot of mom and pop stores. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, so there's, there's been entrepreneurism in the community um, oh, yeah. and, and in retail space and, and different commercial types of space. So what is the future for entrepreneurs? Are these opportunities out there for them to, to buy these spaces? Like, what, what does it look like? You know, uh, we have a frat brother with... Uh, um, nail salon him and his wife have a nail salon and it's a mixed use space they have a, a section 8 tenant upstairs that pays the mortgage for the entire property so what they make is pure profit mm-hmm. and I think that that's, that's the future there we need us to buy those mixed use um, uh, buildings whether there's two or three or four apartments above and then like two like storefronts in the in the bottom wood. We need to grab all of those. Yeah, and the thing is, there are um, city programs that you can get assistance for for, for buying homes. Yeah, there up to are a quarter million. Uh, city, county, and state. Um, so I mean, the thing is, you wherever you live, mm-hmm. you have to look and see what kind of uh, homeowner assistance programs there are. That the fences when I had to come with that seventy seven hundred dollars in down payment, mm-hmm. there may have been um, some kind of assistance program, but you got to do your own research. Mm-hmm. That could have paid that seventy, uh, you know, that seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars. There are tons of those programs, and then for business owners, in, right, right here in Chicago, right. they, um, I can't remember the name of the program, Chicago Neighborhood something or another program that actually helps um, with. Well, they'll match how much money you need in order to renovate a property for your business. Okay, right. You know, so there are these programs out there. Do the research because there are there's money out there from the government to help you uh, create your business and buy your property. So when we, we talk about Chicago, unfortunately, you know, a lot of times when people think about Chicago, they hear about like the violence, right? Especially on the south side, west side. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I, we was driving in the Uber and I was telling the Uber driver like where we was going. And he's like, you know where you're going? Like, <laughs> like, like you know where we you're going? going. So I'm like, nah, I don't know where I'm going. He's like, ah, right. he started laughing. So, but I mean, to me, it, it looks just like the Bronx. Every neighborhood is similar. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, what's one of the things that you can tell the people as far as like Chicago? Because, you know, when, when we come to these cities, we just don't want to stay in downtown. We want to touch like the real parts of the city. Yeah. And we want to we want to give encouragement too. Like we had negative stuff, but obviously this, you're a perfect example of positive stuff that's coming out of Chicago. Mm-hmm. So like, what is, what, is, what, is, what is the hopes to, to um, change the, the narrative of sh- Chicago specifically? Mm-hmm. And what is the, the, the direction that you see like as far as entrepreneurship or investing? Like, is it something that is, is encouraging at the moment? I think it, it is encouraging. I mean, I, I think about the building that we're sitting in to do this podcast. Right, we're in the wood line right now. Yeah, so, you know, shout out to Donnell. Yeah, shout out to the wood that, line. That owns, sure. That owns this spot. I mean, he, he used his money to buy this property he actually had um, there was a, a city assistance program to help fund this, and he's an example. And he's not the only one. The thing is, once you start to get it, you got to think about what circles you're in. Mm-hmm. We're we're always in these circles where we're talking to other people who are creating businesses in real estate, and it's happening all around you. Right. And we do see um, people popping up with these businesses on the south side. There are these pockets. Think about when you walk in here. It, it, it's really nice, and it's not the only one. Right. You, there's a podcast studio in this facility. There's a uh, a cafe downstairs and they do like pop-up restaurants in there and all of the pop-up restaurants owners are black you know like the, that's what's coming now mm-hmm. and this is just one of a, I could think of s- yeah. several yeah, I mean shoot Lighthouse Mickey's Grill yeah. um, they have multiple locations Soul Shack is a like soul food restaurant shout, yeah. shout out to the Bureau Bar yeah, bu- yeah. yeah. Bureau Bar, yeah. bar. Yeah. Bureau Bar exactly. um, hey Fly Fly Apparel um, so I mean, they they, uh, they have these the uh, oh sir, sir and madam, you know yeah. what I'm saying? With, yeah, you know, sir and so, madam, shout which out. is a clothing store. Yeah. So and actually, their clothing is on uh t- with two K uh twenty this year, the basketball. Yeah, they just made yeah. it two K. Their clothes is made it in there. You can like the character you can create. Yeah. You can put their their the sir and madam clothing on. on your character. That's yeah, dope. so Brian, Adam, shout out to y'all for doing what you're doing. So yeah, yeah, the entrepreneurs can succeed in Chicago. There are great stories happening right. in Chicago. And when you look at the people that show up for you all's networking social and different seminars that we're holding, mm-hmm. there's a lot to be um, inspired and in, in, in to think that great things are coming. Nah, that's powerful, man. So we want to thank you guys, first and foremost, for, for, for joining us. Um, can you tell the people how to contact you, how to watch your show, any any initiatives that you have going on? 
Yeah, uh, our Instagram is the Downing Brothers. You know, all one word, the D O W N I N G Brothers, and the same thing with our website, thedowningbrothers.com. Yeah, and you can catch us on, um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, our podcast, uh, Homecoming, Homecoming with the Downer Brothers. You can what's find that on Apple. What's the name of your TV show? Um, um, Double Down. That, that Double Down. And so, uh, and, and and be looking for where we end up next year, because uh, we will be moving around. Mm. Free agents, perhaps? Free agents. <laughs> free agency. We're in free agency. Yes. <laughs> uh, Troy. Yeah, shout out to everybody on Patreon.com backslash Earn Your Leisure. That's our Proud to Pay program. Yeah. Um, y'all know how this works, man. Y'all been supporting us so amazingly. Every time we come on, I'm saying a new person's name. So shout out to y'all. It allows the, the podcast, the show, I should really say, to, mm-hmm. to travel, to come to cities like Chicago and get a, go around the city and interview some hometown heroes, man. Shout out to everybody in mm-hmm. Houston who showed us love. L.A. showed us love. Obviously, Brooklyn, that's home base. They showed love. Atlanta showed love. So... We want to go to your city, man, so keep supporting that. I just want to give a big shout-out to David, who uh, just joined at, at Tier 5. So shout-out to him and uh, Broderick, who actually joined uh, last night, and we met him at the event. So he was like, yo, that's me. I was like, I just typed yeah, you, man. Yeah, shout out to him. yeah so shout-out to Broderick and um, everybody that's been supporting that. that that's our Proud to Pay program once again. And shout-out to everybody that's been supporting the merch, um, earnyourleisure.com. We have everything on there. Um, our tour T-shirts are on there, so the Chicago tour. That's up there. People are like, yo, well, how are y'all picking the colors? So we usually we try, like we said, we, we, you know, we deal with sports and entertainment and the business side. So what we've been trying to do is match it with the football team or the basketball team's colors. Uh, uh, so we try to get both the Bears colors in there, but um, we had a <laughs> slight technical difficulty. But <laughs> shout out to everybody that, that's been supporting on um, EarnYourLeisure.com and getting the merch. Yeah, yeah, I need to get that access over liability. Don't, you know, you know what? We got you. Yeah. We got you, man. We, we got brought some with us. We got you. That's a fact. So thank you guys for rocking with us. We will see you next week. Shout out to Chicago. Peace. Yeah, peace. Appreciate it. All right. Thank y'all for tuning in. And don't forget, Friday at 5, we're going to release episode 47 with superstar NFL agent Greg Barnett. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Peace. <laughs>